all right um, so now we'll uh, so 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 far we have uh, uh, seen the definition of uh, statistical thermodynamics we have uh, seen the uh, difference between thermodynamics and statistical thermodynamics we have taken one example for, for a biological system and we have defined uh, uh, distribution of states and from there we have defined the thermodynamic probability w now uh, now uh, let's look at uh, boltzmann distribution law the very important law in statistical thermodynamics and we'll derive the boltzmann distribution law so let's consider a n particle system uh, with total energy capital e so as i said the total energy i'll be defining as capital e and uh, 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 energy for the states uh, will be defining as epsilon. Um, so, for the ith uh, state, I'll, the energy I will take as epsilon i. So, we have a n particle system uh, with total energy E and the particles are distributed as follows. So, n 0 particles in energy level epsilon 0, uh, number of particles uh, in energy level epsilon 1 is n 1 number of particles in energy level epsilon 2 is n 2 and so on so forth. So, uh, my total number of particles n is sum over n 0 plus n 1 plus n 2 plus all other terms which we write as sum over i n i. Likewise, our total energy E is sum of n0 epsilon 0 plus n1 epsilon 1 plus n2 epsilon 2 and so on so forth which you can write as sum over i n i epsilon i. Okay. Um, to go here. So, as you have uh, seen thermodynamic probability W is n factorial uh, divided by uh, n 0 factorial n 1 factorial n 2 factorial and so on so forth and this we can write as n factorial which is total number of particles and this we can write as product over all n i's factorial. So, this is uh, my w. So, if I take ln of this, we take ln w is equal to ln n factorial minus ln of, uh, okay. Now, now this product becomes sum when you take the ln, right. So, uh, so we write ln n i factorial. Uh, now, we can uh, now since n is large, n is your total number of particles which is very large, we can apply Starling's approximations. What is Starling's approximation? So, Starling's approximation is is that ln this you can write as x ln x minus x. So, Starling uh, is a scientist and he given uh, this theorem that if if x is uh, when x is large when x is large I can write ln x factor uh, x uh, 
uh, factorial as x ln x minus x. So, if we apply that in our expression, we can write ln w is equal to n ln n minus n minus n i ln n i and then minus minus becomes plus. So, sum over n i which is nothing but n. So, this term and this term goes out and we get ln w is n ln n minus sum over i n i ln n i. Okay. Uh, okay. Now uh, I need to go up. Okay. So now, um, so this W is the thermodynamic probability, and you see you have uh, you, so this, this W is the thermodynamic probability, and that thermodynamic probability changes. Uh, all the time since particles are moving up and down. So, since particles go up, come down. So, as they move up and down, the thermodynamic probability also changes. And thermodynamic probability becomes maximum at equilibrium. So, at equilibrium, so at equilibrium W or ln w is uh, is maximum and therefore d if you take the derivative of that d ln w would be 0. So, at equilibrium w or ln w is maximum and therefore, uh, derivative of ln w is 0. So, we can take the derivative of uh, the previous expression uh, where we had uh, d uh, I'll just uh, so we had uh, d of um, n ln n uh, minus d of sum over n i ln n i and that is equal to 0. So, now uh, if we simplify the n ln n, um, so what do you get? Uh, so, if you take d of n ln n you get uh, ln n d n plus you get n. So, d of ln n is 1 by n d n. So, you get ln n d n plus d n and for the second term uh, for this term d of sum over n i ln n i. Likewise, uh, if you uh, simplify ultimately what you should get is basically sum over ln n i d n i plus d n. So, if I put them back here, I get ln n d n plus d n minus sum over i ln n i d n i d n i sorry d n i minus d n that is equal to 0. So, this term this term goes and this is again nothing but 0 because 
uh, your n is uh, constant total number of particles and uh, derivative of n is 0. So, this leads us to sum over i ln n i d n i is equal to 0. This is a very important expression, but the problem of this expression is we cannot solve this equation anymore any further and that is because this d n i is not independent. Particles are spontaneously and continuously moving up and down and therefore, d n i is not is not independent. So, how to simplify this expression? So, to simplify this expression we will be um, calling some uh, important mathematical uh, method uh, proposed by Lagrange and which is called Lagrange undetermined multiplier undetermined multipliers. So, we will be uh, making use of Lagrange undetermined multiplier. Uh, so, the expression we got sum over i ln i d n i is equal to 0, we will write it down in the next page. Sum over ln n i d n i is equal to 0, this is what we got. this is uh, we put expression number 1. So, now since uh, uh, as I said since d n i is not independent we need to uh, uh, apply Lagrange uh, method. So, according to uh, the uh, so following that method we have to make uh, use of two constant conditions we have. So, we have two constants in the uh, in our system. So, one constant was total number of particle n is constant. So, therefore, if I write d n uh, as d n i is equal to 0, because I, my total number of particle n is constant, n is fixed and therefore, derivative of n uh, is 0 and d n is nothing but sum over i uh, d n i. This is one constant we had we also had another constant which is total energy also has to be fixed. So, if E is the total energy of the system and that is fixed. So, you, we take D of E and D of E is nothing but uh, uh, um, D uh, uh, epsilon i d n i and that is equal to 0 because of my E is constant. So, these are the uh, two constants we have. So, according to uh, Lagrange multipliers, um, we multiply these two constants with a constant. After that, if we add those two expressions with our parent equation, then the variables become independent. So, at the moment our d n i s are not independent. So, now following the Lagrange multipliers what we are doing we are basically multiplying constant 1 by a constant alpha d n i and then adding to this expression multiplying the second constant with another um, constant beta adding the uh, adding those two up in my parent expression 1 and they sum up to 0. So, now uh, according to Lagrange now d n i s become uh, independent. Okay, so, we can write this as ln n i plus alpha plus 
beta epsilon i d n i is equal to 0. So, now here there are so now the restraining condition that d n i s are not independent is gone. So, due to Lagrangian multipliers my d n i s are are now independent 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 so that is one and number two but this d n i it cannot be zero d n i cannot be zero because um, particles are always moving up and down and therefore d n i which basically talks about uh, change in number of particles across the state that is uh, non zero so applying these two conditions what we get from this expression is that we write ln n i plus alpha plus beta epsilon i is 0. So, we go to next page. So, we write ln n i plus alpha plus beta epsilon i is equal to 0. So, you got ln n i plus alpha plus beta epsilon i is equal to 0. Now, you know that uh, we know n is sum over n i. So, um, okay, from, from here we can write n i as e to the power minus alpha e to the power minus beta epsilon i, right. So, you can write n i as e to the power minus alpha times e to the power minus beta epsilon i. And since we know n is equal to sum over uh, n i, uh, we can make use of this expression here. And if you put this expression here, we get e to the power minus alpha e to the power minus beta epsilon i. Since alpha is a constant, we can write e to the power minus alpha as n divided by sum over e to the power minus beta epsilon i. Right? So, let us give some name of the number of this expression. So, let us say this is equation number A, this is equation number B. So, combining uh, A and B, we get N i is equal to N e to the power minus beta epsilon i divided by sum over e to the power minus beta epsilon i. This is the famous Boltzmann distribution law. <clears throat> so, what this uh, distribution law says? This law says that number of particle in the state with energy epsilon i is n i. So, n i is number of particles having uh, energy epsilon i at equilibrium. So, Boltzmann distribution basically uh, dictates uh, the distribution of particles across the energy states. Okay. Uh.